George Rapp. George, you just told me your age. You want to tell this group? Very happy to. I was born 1895. You are. When is your birthday? September the 26th. So you'll be 85 this That's year. That's right. Holy Toledo. <laughs> you Toledo look, was you look, right. You look wonderful. Well, thank you. What are you doing? What are you doing these days, George? <laughs> I don't do anything. I'm an ambassador of goodwill to the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas. But you do go to an office every day and function yes. a, in an office here. Yeah, I sit there and people walk by and they say, is that you? And I say, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves commercials. And you, you've done a couple of commercials that a lot of... There's a line from a deodorant commercial. Lay that line on us in the deodorant commercial. You know the one oh, I'm talking the, about? Oh, the one about in the prison? Yeah. Where I say this place could use a, a stick-up. <laughs> <laughs> one line. One line. Then I do, I got one on that's on now. You're in the back of a limo, I yeah, think. Yeah, and I don't even know the girl is sitting alongside me. I you just got in there and delivered another line. That's all, and I said, uh, tune it up. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big hit. <laughs> that's wonderful. <laughs> Did you ever think 20 or 30 years ago that you'd be doing commercials and doing just one line? No, Did that I, ever occur to you? No, it never occurred. I thought, I think they're great, the one-liners, oh, because wow. you're in and out. Yeah. I don't know what the commercial is about. I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> or care. Were you a quick study when yes. you were doing pictures? Yes. Uh, some people are blessed yes. with being able to look at a script and just, boom. Yeah, well, I was a pretty quick study, but I didn't have too many lines. Yeah. Because I always played the guy that, you know, with a gun or something like that. After all, I, I was I 105 pictures, and I was killed 85 times. <laughs> How far can you, you go, eh? <laughs> you were the original rat face. <laughs> but you, you, did you get the girl in many pictures? I know away from the pictures, you got a lot of girls, George. Well, I yeah, that. I did pretty well that way, but uh, no, not in the pictures. I never, I always got killed. I heard, I heard through the grapevine that everything Errol Flynn claimed you were really doing. <laughs> is, is that true, George? I wouldn't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Too much of a gentleman to yeah, talk about. Yeah, well, I, uh, I never would discuss women, you know. That was the thing that was out of well, my that's wonderful. ballpark. That's wonderful. I always put all the women on a pedestal. But you went with some very beautiful women. Yes. Big, big stars. Yes. Can we name just a few of the ladies you dated? You name them. <laughs> <laughs> Carol Lombard? Yes. Betty Grable? Yes. Look at this. I, I'm yeah. batting a thousand. I only met you two people. Yeah. Uh, Marlene Dietrich? Marlene Dietrich? Yeah. Didn't you have to do something to her in a movie one time? George, you've always been a perfect gentleman. And he meant what he said about ladies. He respects them. Uh, but they wanted you to clout her in a picture, didn't they? Yeah, they wanted me to hit her. And I said, well, I don't like to hit women. I never would do it in reality or real life. And, of course, they says, well, you must, you must. And she came to me and says, George, you got to hit me. I says, no. I, so finally went on for a couple of days, and I finally did hit her. And in the, she had a line where she was said with the, she was hit harder. But it, it, she twisted the line. She says, I've never been hit harder than that in my life. <laughs> Didn't you knock her down and she, yes, broke, up, she broke, broke her ankle? Boat? broke her ankle. That one of those famous legs. Yeah. Holy Toledo. <laughs> Well, what the, uh, you know, I was a phony price fighter for a while. No, you, I, uh, now listen, yeah. Jimmy Cagney, when I interviewed Jimmy Cagney, I said something to the effect that you were a very tough kid. And he said, listen, let me tell you who is really tough. And he didn't say was, he said is. Uh, he said, one time I was fooling around with George Raft, and, and he said, I took my hand back in George and said, Jim, you'd be sitting on the floor by the time you got that thing caught. That's right. <laughs> because fighters hit you right, boom, straight on. They don't draw them back, you know. Well, I, what could, what could a guy do when, who had no education? So I tried to be a price fighter, I tried to be a ball player, I was a dancer, and how I got in pictures, I don't know. How did you get in pictures? They picked me up. Who, who picked you up? <laughs> a fellow named Roland Brown. Where were you, in Roseland Ballroom or one of those no, places? No, no, I was uh, 
I had just come back from England, and I came to California because I had played here in Vaudeville. I see. So I come out here, and I was sitting in the Brown Derby, which is right here on Vine Street. Sure. Famous And the fella came over to me and said, well, I'd like you to go into a motion picture for me. Just like that, not knowing what you yeah, could do? And I says, uh, well, I've never been a motion picture actor. I said, as a dancer. He says, yes, I know. He says, will you come down to the studio tomorrow? I said, I'd be very happy to. So I went what down. What studio was that, George? The William Fox Studio on Western Avenue. Uh-huh. And there was a man by the name of Gardner who was the casting director. And this fellow, Roland Brown, was the, the director and the writer of the, the picture. Spencer Tracy was the star oh, Spencer, of the picture. So, the first uh, picture. so the wind-up piece is, well, I know George Raft. He was a dancer. He was famous in New York, working in all the places that he worked in. Who said that, Tracy? No, Gardner. Oh, Gardner. So, uh, but we got people on the lot that we have on the contract that we much rather put in the picture. So they kept arguing back and forth, and I says, look, wait a minute, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go in, I'll do what you want me to do, and if my work is satisfactory, you make some arrangements to pay me. If it isn't satisfactory, you don't owe me anything. And I was the first one on the screen to say, I had touched my handkerchief and my hat, and said, this town isn't big enough for both of us. One of us has to leave. You winged that line? You yeah. had lived that line? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, they called me. Who were you saying it to at the time? Uh, uh, Tracy, was it? No. Leon Ames, who later did the... Uh, did the drunk act. He was the perennial drunk, wasn't yeah, he? No, he was the guy that did uh, some television... Oh, Leon Ames yeah. was a Ford dealer here for a while, That's wasn't right. he? That's right, and uh, Bazooka Bob Burns. Oh, for God. And they play all play gangsters. See, and I played Tracy's bodyguard in the picture. You know who I was thinking of who played the perennial drunk? Leon Errol. Leon Errol. Remember how yeah. wonderful he was yeah. with those rubbery legs? But you actually said this town is... Isn't big enough for both of us. And what did you do with your handkerchief? I touched my handkerchief and touched my hat and left. And that did it, a whole yeah. career from there. And from Wait, there do you remember what they paid you, George, for that first stint? $150 a week. That was a ton of money in those days, wasn't it? <laughs> no, I no? don't know. You had made more in vaudeville? Oh, yeah. I made more as a dancer. I worked in four different places in the day. Were you ever? Were you a self-taught dancer? Or yes, did people... I watched. I watched them up in Harlem. I was, oh, I was never a good dancer. Oh, now, wait a minute. No, I was a stylist. Well, that's better. Yeah, of course, I mean, I, and I first introduced the French tango in America. Where did, where did you learn it? Just, uh, I was in France when I was there, and I watched people dance, and I sort of introduced it, and I introduced a dance in a picture called Bolero. Is that the picture where they wanted to, you were with Carol Lombard, and they wanted to kill you? While you were dancing with her? And no, that was the other one, rumba. Oh, I did the rumba before it was popular. <laughs> Ten years before, I didn't know I, what I was doing. How did, how did that happen? I don't know. I, I just thought of the different things, that was all. A rumba is just a takeoff on the two-step anyway, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, it? it's... Uh, what they know, call a lindy today. We used to call it a one, lindy. Two, three, four, you yeah, know. Yeah, sure. And, of course, I was in Cuba, and watching the Cubans do, you know, rumba dancing, it's just sensational. You know, they don't move here, don't move there. Just it's the, just their backside. The hips, just the hips go, yep, yeah, but on. dig it. Boy, it's they, nice. And I learned how to dance up in Harlem, watching them dance. You, you got you got one of those rumbas left in you like the Cubans? No. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I got Tell, an emphysema. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Tell the story about the little chorus girl who came to you and was out of money. And you were known for a guy who helped struggling actors. You had a lot of compassion. Oh, still yeah. Have. Well, I, I don't know. If somebody comes to you and needs help, you give it to him. And she came to you and had and no money? No money. Course, girl. Yeah, and I helped her. What they were so what, far, right? What'd you give her, George? 300. You remember who she was? No. We know who it was. George. Yeah? You don't want to tell it. You're too, too no. much class, huh? No. Would it bother you if I told? You don't want me yeah, to tell it. Yeah. Okay, I won't tell very important lady he helped. Uh -huh. Did you date her too, George? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you... She in... became very famous, didn't she? Oh, and how? <laughs> and how? The biggest yeah. name I know on television. <laughs> <laughs> You're quite a guy. Yeah. You really are. Who's your favorite uh, guy that you work with in pictures of all the people? You've you worked with so many oh. super jobs. I think Cagney, Muni, Tracy. Oh. I work with so many Academy Award winners, they all won the award, not me. 
Did you ever, were you ever nominated, George? Yeah, I was nominated. I ran fourth. <laughs> <laughs> Can you find out in the top five where you, where you I know I was, I know I was fourth. Out of the money. Out of the out money. Of the money. Yeah. Well, How my... was your son-in-law? I mean, he bets on all the winners. <laughs> With you. Oh, yes. My yes. son-in-law came out. I, got, I go to the track about once a year. I saw George out yeah. there. My son-in-law is uh, in the computers and everything, and he's, he's a very deep, very bright kid, and he's on the dean's list at, at Horton. And he took a racing form. I know from nothing in a race. Oh. I just look at the horses, and if the horse looks like it's got a few breaths left, I say, well, I like the way he looks, and I like those colors and the name. I'll, if it's a name I called one of my kids or something, I'll bet on that horse. My son-in-law said, Dad, that's not the way it works. He said, he picked four straight that's winners right. the day I was with yours, and I didn't catch on until about the third one. Oh, I, I bet on the third one. Did you I bet? The, you. Yeah. Did you really? Well, certainly. Am I in on somebody action, Joe? No, yeah, anytime. <laughs> George, in my book, as a movie star, you're a 10. A 10? A 10, yeah. <laughs> More with the super seniors. Right and this, I thought that the first time I asked you that you were kidding me about it, of all the 105 movies this man has made, he has never seen himself on the screen. He still, does that still go? Yes. And what happens if you're passing a TV set and someone has one of your movies on? You just turn your oh, back. Oh, I just keep going. <laughs> I want to tell you something, George. You're terrific in movies. No. You ought to look at them sometime. <laughs> From, from the first day, you've never seen any never rushes? Seen. No, I made a test many years ago when I was a dancer, and I, guy rushed me up. At that time, they put red in your eyes and made up your hands. And, of course, Harry Richmond, God rest his soul in peace, made a test at the same time. And he looked like a black man on the screen. I said, oh, my God, what am I going to look like, you know? So I said, that's me, and they said, yes. And I, I would never look at myself after that. And when you became a big star, you still no, weren't even no, curious? No. The... Because, as I said, everybody was better than me, so I just went along with it. <laughs> oh, you were. And you got to see him. I want to tell you something. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. you got to check in because you were something else on that screen. I know they rerun one of them on Sunset Boulevard or something, Scarface. Yeah. And uh, people said, will you come down and see it? I said, no, I won't go, <laughs> won't go near the street. <laughs> I, be too frightened. I mean, the way I look now, I was a young guy at that time. 